people around me think I'm goofy and, you know, I'm kind of getting used to that. So let them think. But that makes sense because if you are tensing up that muscle, then you're going to have a sore muscle. That's right. And so your that's b- brain exactly why. can override any. Right. Your brain can override anything. You just have to set it into motion. You know, you have to put the intent, and then the brain can override that. So that is what I do and what I tell people to do. So if you ever see anybody mumbling about their <laughs> brain and their butt, you'll know where they got that from. Um, you know what's so funny? What? Is yesterday, uh, my left Shut side hurt. Up. Yeah, it's, it's so the weird. truth. And I've been kind of, and it's muscular. It's not... And it happened when I was getting out of my car because I didn't get out of my car properly. Ah, I I, so that. bad me. But it's it feels a lot better today. I've been stretching it, but now I know what to say to it. So thank you. Yes, and um, talking about getting in and out of cars, people ask me all the time, "What's the right way to get in and out of your vehicle?" Well, honestly, I try to stay forward facing. So, like, if I was going to get into my vehicle, I would want my pelvis to face towards the steering wheel or towards the front end of the car. I open the door. I put my left hand on top of the door frame. I put my right hand on the steering wheel. I put my right leg in and I lower myself down and I do the hokey pokey pokey and and you turn turn yourself around. I knew you were thinking that. (laughs) I could read it in your face. No. So we lower ourselves in. (laughs) That's so funny. With our upper body strength. And then bring our left leg in. And all the time, do not twist. All the time, keep your pelvis facing forward. Same thing when you get out. Open the door. Put your left leg out. Hand up on top of the door frame. Right hand on the steering wheel. Lift yourself up. And then pull your right leg out. And keep your pelvis forward facing the entire time. Do not twist. I'm, I'm going to practice that. Because I, I don't do it exactly like that. But I do with the legs and stuff. And yesterday... I I was taking Dylan to the groomer and I just let out with my left leg and then just kind of scooched. Scooching. And when scooching I, and twisting. Yep. Scooching and twisting. And when I got back in the car, I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that can create some problems. And so, yeah, a lot of people think sciatica comes from the top down. But I'm also going to say that I have a significant amount of cases of sciatica that comes from the ground up. And what I mean by that is sometimes the heel, which is called the calcaneus bone, will drop and it will be Uh low. And when it does that, it pulls and tugs and pulls and tugs on that. The whole back musculature of the leg, the whole sciatic nerve gets traction. And I'm going to tell you one thing that a nerve will not put up with is being tractioned. It does not like it. It can create the worst sensation of pain. It can be electrical. It can be hot poker. It can be uh, just the most vile kind of pain. And all it takes is me putting that heel bone, boom, right back. And I've had people come, you know, from other chiropractors, and they're like, oh, he he worked on my back and my hip, but it's just not getting better. I'm like, that's because of this. Pop. Wow, isn't that something? And it's, it's happy as a lark. Because you cannot have that stuff stretched. Ooh, that's going to lead me to another point. I am an anti-stretcher. And I probably would get all kinds of comments about this. But when something hurts, I would not pull at it at both ends, which is basically what stretching is. Let's say, for instance, my right side of my neck hurts. Okay. So it's tight. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to pull my head to the left, try to stretch that out. Well, that sucker's already knotted up. He's pretty upset. So to pull at it at both ends is just making the knot tighter. It's just making the knot tighter. Then the body's like, oh, I got to pull harder. And then it makes that creates that tension even more. And then all of a sudden it knots up even more. Whereas if you relax to the side where it hurts and you shorten the space of what's being pulled on, eventually that muscle will will relax. And it doesn't take long. It takes like a few minutes. Like usually if the right side of my neck hurts, I will get against a wall, lean up, and let my head rest to the right. And in so doing that, I take the pressure and the traction off the nerve and the muscle. And all of a sudden, whoosh, it just melts away. Wow, that's good to know. Yeah. And there's all these people that go, I've been doing everything. 
boy, I've been stretching and I've been putting heat on. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Doesn't anybody listen to my radio show? (laughs) (laughs) No heat, people. It does not like heat when it's inflamed. It just makes it inflamed or <laughs> inflamed <her. laughs> We don't want to be more inflamed. We want to be less inflamed. Thank you. So that's it. Ice is better than heat. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't mean to cough into the ca- uh, camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I'm a big advocate of ice myself. And uh, it's an underused commodity. It is. And it's so helpful. It gets rid of inflammation. It calms tissue. It reduces swelling. It's uh, it's just phenomenal. It takes away pain. It actually gates pain because the cold, uh, the frigidness of it creates a, um, a different mechanoreceptor, which are the little feelers in our skin. It's like there's different mechanoreceptors for different feelings. There's one for soft touch, one for light vibration, one for pain, one for cold, one for hot. So they're antagonistic to one another. So you can use that. To gate Ah. pain. In other words, if I turn on my vibration receptor, my pain receptor turns off. So Mm. if I have a little vibrating thing I can put against me, like a little back vibrator or whatever, my back pain is going to turn off because my mechanoreceptor for pain is going to turn off while my vibration receptor is on. So that's why those chairs at the gym work. Yeah, they they feel great, don't they? Yes, they do. Now, a lot of those have heat involved. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. Right. <laughs> right. My go-to thing, if someone says I'm hurt, I say ice it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Ice is your best bet. I mean, heat is okay in the instance where a muscle is tight, but there's no inflammation and there's no injury. And But pretty much if you have pain, that means there's inflammation and injury. If it's just tight, you can usually get away with a little heat. But if it is painful... Red, swollen, irritated. I mean, don't put heat on it. You're just asking for more trouble. Right. I agree. And when I was in school, there was an acronym that we used, and it was it was NICE, but I can't remember what anything stands for except for the E is elevate and the I is ice. <laughs> I love that you brought it up anyway. <laughs> We're 50-50 on that one, people. <laughs> but so ice and elevate, the rest do something nice. How about, how about, um, I can't, uh, oh, and I don't have my phone here. I feel so naked. I'm trying to think of something. Yeah. For it. What's in? What would N be? N would be, uh, intoxicate. No, that's no, not it. No, that starts with I. <laughs> Nicotine. No, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> do, do not take our advice at this moment, please. I think we should leave that subject okay, really quick. Then. I'm going to have to look it up, though. It's it's driving me crazy. So that's really good advice. Um, some things that I didn't even think of, relaxing into, uh, and it makes so much sense when you think about it mechanically. Yeah, like why would you pull on that muscle? He's obviously going to retaliate. I mean, right. anybody would if he was already angry and upset <laughs> so let let him have his way let him relax yeah. give, him, give him give him you could even talk to it like you time. do your i do and i teach my patients to do that and they think it's so funny at first but when they realize how much control they have over their bodies they're like oh my gosh why mm. was i not taught this in school mm. you mean i can tell my calf muscle to relax and it has to listen well, sure. Who else is it going to listen to? <laughs> I mean, it's going to listen to your brain. Really? It's supposed to be the mainframe, right? I can't tell your calf muscle to relax. No. No, it won't listen to me. Although I will say, now this is something freaky, and everybody likes my freaky talk, so I'm going to talk freaky. a little freaky. Okay. All right, so once in a while, I get somebody in such bad spasm that I have all the girls that work for me that are there at the time come in. Put their hands on them. I put my hands on them, and we tell our own body to relax. Ah. You're right. I can't tell his body to relax, but guess what? If I tell my body to relax and they tell their bodies to relax, a little bit of that message goes to his body, Hmm. and his body will relax in response. 
which is really cool. It's kind of a hands-on healing kind of thing. It but is, but it indirect. really is. It's very scientific, right. actually. Because we are bags of water. So we conduct electricity right. and nerve impulses are electrical in nature. So when a brain sends a nerve impulse down the nerve and you're touching another person, a tiny, 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 tiny little bit of that message travels into you. And that same message goes along your nerve fibers and tells your muscle to relax. Hmm. It's not a lot. But with three people, it can actually accomplish a little bit. Of letting go of the patient, which is really cool. I can believe like, that. I'm not strong enough to do it on my own, but with three people touching them and everybody telling their own body, and that's the secret. You don't tell his body. You ain't talking to him. You're talking to your own body, and you're just telling it, relax, relax. And as we relax, his body is picking up just the tiniest little smidge of all of our messages to hmm. relax, which is so cool. It's super cool. And and there's hands-on healers that can do that. I really, I don't know. I know some hands-on healers that work with uh, <clears throat> energy yeah, and, right, and things like right. that. I know some that work with uh, kinesiology. I know some that work with um, other modalities. But I really, I don't know. Um, and, you know, then you get into the faith healers and things right, like right. that. And, and miraculous things can happen right. in faith healing but situations. It, it, but it but makes sense because know. some people utilize more. If that works with people that don't aren't even into that, they're just into helping or relaxing themselves, it makes sense that if you have worked on that part of your brain, your physiology or whatever, that it would work yeah i mean, I mean it, it really does sense. and and again it is uh in my mind anyway it is scientific because it has to do with laws of physics mm -hmm. and conduction of electricity mm -hmm. and you know energy and we are a conductor i mean we are two-thirds water right we're a conductor and we have sodium in us so we're a good conductor of electricity and um, that's all nerve impulses are, mm -hmm. are electrical. Um, another cool thing that really has nothing to do with that. I'm sorry. I'm so scattered, people. But that's the way my brain works. Welcome you know to what? my You're mind. You're not really scattered. You're just. You, I keep thinking of different Yeah, so it's like, fine because something reminds you of it. So yeah. go. So this is a cool thing. If somebody is, let's say they have a stroke. And so one side is not strong. Right. They cannot even pick up a ball and squeeze it. That's right. If they pick up a ball and squeeze it on the good side, 10% of their bad side will get worked. Ah, simply because... Because you're firing those nerves. Right. And what happens is sense. when your brain sends a nerve impulse down a nerve, it splits and 90% of it will go to the correct side and approximately, I mean, I don't know the numbers. I'm not going to lie. I'm guessing a little on the numbers. But about 10% of it scatters to the wrong huh. side. It's just, it's, it's because, you know, there is an error there. That, that, that it just happens. So because there's an error there, a lot of times, um, you know, somebody will come in with right-sided pain, but I'll find something on the left. And they're like, wow, I didn't even know that hurt. Well, no, but... The problem is, is when your brain was sending response signals down to the pain, 90% of it went to the right side and made that tense up. And 10% of that message scattered accidentally to the left side and the left side tensed up. So you can use that in terms of uh, recovery processes, like for stroke or even for like MS and things like that. If they can't use one side of their body, they can still exercise the other side and 10% of that message will go to the other side. They've even done studies on this and shown that after three months of exercising the strong side, the weaker side is like 15, 20% stronger too, well, which and, is cool. And it makes sense because it's a neuralistic path. That's right. That, yeah. And you can create new ones, even if these are gone. That's right. In one side of your body, you can create new ones. So I like that. I like, I like that concept. I mm -hmm. like using the body to help the body. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's what makes you special. Super cool. Thank that you. That you like that. And who wouldn't? You know, it's all about letting our bodies do what they're supposed to do and treating them right so that they can do it optimally. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 
I I can't remember my other topic. I was going to segue, and I can't remember. So let's go to your topics. All right. My topic is, you know, any day now, I'm going to be a grandma. Yay! Hopefully tomorrow. 